There are many ways of playing Pump It Up. You begin your progression with singles, later on try some doubles, but what about the other modes? What are those two doing? That is why in this video, I'll be introducing you to the world of co-op. So, right now, I'm taking you to the United Subway, but first, uh, you've got to press this red button in order for us to uh, get through, so, uh, thanks. So, what exactly are co-op charts? Co-op charts, also known as performance charts back in Fiesta 2, are charts where 2-5 to five players play on the same pads. You can tell if it's a co-op chart if people just go ridiculous or if it has a yells. The number next to the X states how many players are recommended for that chart. So, if you're an avid pump player, you might have seen co-op gameplay and think it's cool, but why should you, someone who's played pump seriously for some time, take co-op seriously? You probably tried co-op once or twice, think it's some like fun side niche you'll play, but never really touch it again. But let me tell you, that is a big mistake because co-op is seriously enjoyable. There are tons of fun- There are tons of co- This f***ing squeaky ass chair. There are tons of fun charts with unique patterns that are just exclusive to co-op, such as specific types of patterns, gimmicks, both players having to use some really unique skills you wouldn't see otherwise, like no bar, balance, coordination, and so on. Or maybe another reason you haven't given co-op a proper shot is just how intimidating it can look. I'm hoping with my personal decent experience of co-op with being a co-op beginner player, having some expert players, and generally having a decent sense with it, I can hopefully make the entry for co-op a little bit easier for you guys. Let's begin with the prerequisite. For one, if you just started playing Pump, like you just figured out full mode, you finally mastered your twists, and you're trying out some doubles, I really wouldn't recommend co-op yet. I would say the basic entry for co-op play is around level 10, if you want to be safe like a basic intermediate title, and generally both players being able to play level 10 onwards for both singles and doubles. Otherwise, you'll get rocked. You lack the fundamentals, you die. Even the most basic of entry of co-op charts aren't exactly easy. Players are getting used to reading the notes based on a single color, and these charts also use the same type of patterns you would see in singles and doubles like twists, stairs, jumps, etc. So if you're not at the skill yet, don't worry, just keep playing the game and just focus on the meantime and improving your singles and doubles. Don't leave the video yet, I need my watch time! So while the entry to co-op may not be the most generous to brand new players, I can assure you that once you get to the point where you can play co-op with other players, you have a blast. I'd consider playing co-op charts to be the beginning from a beginner player transitioning to intermediate. It's like your first exclusive club, you know? Not all players get to this point. Having to play charts with your locals or like new players you get to meet, that's pretty cool. So remember how I said co-op is very unique? Due to the fact how changing the note skin doesn't do anything. Well, I mean, like, barely. The idea is that for co-op, instead of looking at your natural colors, now you have to focus only on a single color depending on your player type. Player 1 steps on reds, player 2 steps on blues, player 4 steps on balls, and so on. When I first started off co-op, this was very jarring to me, as I was previously identifying notes for colors. Eventually, I got used to identifying notes by themselves based on their shape and position. This is strange at first, but the more co-op you play, you'll eventually just get used to this. Due to the variety, it's hard to necessarily give universal advice for all co-op charts since different amount of players for co-op charts can alter the gameplay style and be quite different with increasing amount of players. That being said, the tips I'll be providing for co-op primarily focuses on beginner to advanced difficulty 2x chart, meaning most of my co-op experience comes from playing with one other player and not multiple. I would recommend starting off with 400 AV and slowly increase or decrease it. As a side note, it's important to have the auto velocity set to a speed where both players are comfortable reading with. And while I can't keep my word for this, another really important habit I recommend having early on is to trust your partner, no matter what, and have confidence in them. Even if they're less experienced, you don't want to distract yourself by worrying about your partner. Just do your best as a partner, focus on your notes, and understand how your teammates are external factors generally out of your control. Now that we established the entry of playing co-op, here's how you can approach it. For one, it's important to understand how unlike singles and doubles where they have provided difficulty via their number, co-op doesn't have any difficulty indication, meaning if you pick a co-op chart, it can be either straightforward, hard, or whatever this is. Ah, so make sure to use the co-op tier list and slowly work your way from the top to bottom. And do not, for the love of god, do not skip the tiers if you're just starting out co-op. 
even if both players are decently skilled in singles or doubles, you need to make sure that since you're just starting out, you need to play beginner friendly charts as as the difficulty for co-op charts quickly ramp up as you need to develop the basic reading fundamentals and pad transitions. Otherwise, you'll struggle down the road hard. Another thing, if you're still struggling to read co-op even after spending time, consider trying out Freedom, also known as FD. FD hides the hit receptors, which may make reading co-op a bit easier for some players. Regarding your partner, there are typically two situations. You either play with people you've never met before via traveling or friends. Regarding people you've never met before, Decide and pick difficulties you know you can pass together depending on the player. However, if they are more skilled than you, then I would highly recommend pushing yourself to go for more challenging passes. I've consistently seen my co-op gameplay perform better when I'm with more experienced players rather than the new ones as I feel more confident. I don't have to have irrational thoughts in the back of my head about my partner making mistakes, and I know if I'm the less experienced player, it's time for me to step up to the plate. This adds some healthy pressure for you to perform better as you don't want to disappoint your partner. But what if you have a friend or local that you meet frequently? Well, they can be your co-op buddy. By playing with a specific partner, regardless if they're less skilled than you or not, as long as you can consistently play with them, you'll naturally develop a flow state where you guys are synced together. It's mutualism. Both players have this positive feeling of their performance and confidence to rely on each other. You probably know each other's skills pretty well, have better understanding of a reading speed ideal for you two, optional crouching, less hesitation, less bums, reading speed, balance, no bar, and so much more. Speaking of no bar, Probably one of the most crucial skill sets you need for co-op is to learn no bar. Now for more experienced players, this is probably the biggest reason I would see players avoid it. For players who only use bar, I know it's scary, but in order to play co-op, even at the most basic level, we'll have players encounter basic pad transitions. And beyond the higher level, you need to develop the skill to alternate bar use. One to fully hold, partially hold, no bar, etc. This type of multitasking is necessary at the higher level, and it's a fine balance in game between temporarily using it or not. But if you're in the lower tiers, don't worry so much about it. Studying. This is not mandatory, but it's another great way of improving co-op skill. As you or both players are studying charts, you guys will be less sight read dependent, know when the diff spikes come, but also help you better understand different pad transitions, read fundamentals, and more. By having goals of studying ahead of time of which charts you want to pass, or S rank, it will definitely make your co-op sessions more refined and better. Quick tip here, co-op charts repeatedly seem to have the same type of pad transitions. Beginner charts have basic ones with players going from the top to bottom, intermediate charts have harder ones with the double twist, advanced transitions where it will get wider, tighter, and faster. At a lower level with pad transitions, try to do these legit and don't double step them. And even if you master common co-op pad transitions, a lot of co-op charts still can be pretty unpredictable and hard to sight read, just with the abundance of different types of charting. Last, let's talk about co-op's overflow system, which, okay, even after researching and trying to understand it, I still don't have a concrete definition on overflow, so take what I'm about to say of a grain of salt. Basically, overflow is a system where if your white bar reaches max, you have this like stored life bonus where misses and bads don't really punish as much until you run out of overflow. Take a look at this visual example. I'm playing this S20, I have full life until this final run, I miss a bunch but because of overflow I'm able to tank these misses much more easily thanks to the life bonus and get the path. Without overflow I would have definitely failed. Overflow increases the higher chart level you go for singles and doubles, but for all co-op charts the overflow amount is a large fat 50. Meaning if you miss with overflow and co-op with full life, your life bar will barely move. So with any mistakes, misreads, you have plenty of room compared to singles and doubles to quickly carry on and recover your life back. In conclusion, co-op isn't easy, especially if you're just getting into it. You will bump into your partner, misread patterns, rely on bar too much, and you're fail stupid. so much more. And that's okay, that's the fun of it. Just keep practicing and you will enjoy what co-op has to offer. Again, I have to repeat this, but co-op provides such a unique experience. And it's a very different type of challenge between singles and doubles because you have a teammate, you're working together. And I wish co-op wasn't treated as such a niche game mode and just underlooked. First time I tried co-op, it was such a magical experience. And it's also such a great social icebreaker when you meet new players. I want more players to get into co-op. And who knows, maybe Andrew will finally add co-op difficulty so you don't have to jump into Candy thinking, Oh, I like that song. Maybe co-op charting contest? That would be sick. With that being said, I hope this video reaches some players who are a little hesitant about co-op, maybe people who were getting into it just a little bit better. Please subscribe today, we are so close to 600 subscribers. Join the Pump United Discord server today, it has also the co-op tier list, and, and yeah. I don't, I don't know what else to say. I'm really hungry. I'm just gonna eat these sour cream onion chips up. I got the the hungu zippo as well. Okay, bye.
Fresh game.